Hello and welcome to the latest Inside Training podcast brought to you by Bartercard, where we speak to people inside HTC and really get inside of their minds. This is the sixth episode and I'm delighted to be joined by our brand new director of football, Brian McDermott. And in this episode, we'll speak to Brian about his new role at Hibs, his background, his ideas on recruitment, football philosophy, and his plans for Hibernian FC. Joining us here in the Emerald Club, a brand new suite, state-of-the-art suite here at Easter Road. I'm delighted to be joined by Brian. Brian, how are you and how was the flight this morning? Good flight. I was up early. It's nice to be here. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to the challenge. Fantastic. Well, I think it's the right place to start here is to chat about your career firstly. Um, so obviously you came through as a as a player at, at Arsenal. You made over 300 appearances in the game as well. Talk to us about, about your playing career and what it was like to come through at, at st- such a prestigious club. Yeah, I came through, I was... Um... I got released from Queen's Park Rangers when I was 14 or 15 years of age. I went to Millwall on trial and didn't get a chance there. And I got picked up by Arsenal and uh, made my debut at 17 years of age. So um, I had, I played for about seven years there. And I had a few loan moves as well. In the meantime, I, I went out to Sweden. I went to Fulham. I went to Huddersfield. Um, different clubs. So... I had quite a long playing career and uh, I got three promotions at the same time as well. So I did okay as far as playing was concerned. When you were coming towards the end of your playing career, did you know where you wanted to go next? Not really. I woke up one morning and I'd finished and I thought, well, what am I going to do? And I, I, I ended up um, setting up a football in the community scheme and I did that for two years and uh, I really enjoyed that. Got a lot of work with young kids and... We had girls football going on a Monday night in 1996. And I think we had about 40 girls turning up for training. It was great. And like now, girls football and women's football has been fantastic. And it's really kicked on. And not, it wasn't like that in those days. Um, and then I became a manager. I was a manager in the conference for two clubs, for Slough Town and for Woking. And then went to Reading in 2000, 1999, 2000 as head scout. And I was there for 13 years. Yeah, I wanted to touch upon the football and the community stuff at, at Slough firstly. But how much fun was that almost to to build out that programme, to coach, to to then develop further sessions? And how did that help set you up for the rest of your career post-play? It did, actually. Um, I set that, we set that scheme up from nothing, literally a piece of paper. We had no football in the community. We got a few coaches around us. We started to go into schools and coach on a daily basis. And we set up schemes for for young kids to come and do their stuff at Easter and Christmas in the summer holidays. Uh, and it went really, really well. And I did that for two years. So for me, it was good grounding. And I'd been doing my my um, football licenses as well. Like my, They used to call it the prelim back in the day and then they did the the full badge, which is now called the A licence, and I eventually went on and did my pro licence. So, yeah, it was really good, really good grounding for me. And then one day um, I I went straight from that to becoming the football manager at Slough. So it was kind of a, it was a steep learning curve as far as football management was concerned for me. Yeah, absolutely. And then obviously from Slough to Woking and then uh, to to Reading where I'm sure um, supporters know you from the most. Um, how did the the kind of chief scout position at Reading come about? Um, Alan Pardew rang me. He was manager at the time and asked me, I didn't really know Alan. I'd met him at a game at Brentford Reserves one day when I was managing at Woking and we, we had a good chat and he rang me out of the blue and said, would you be chief scout? but not only Chief Scout, also under-17 manager for the academy. So I did two roles. I did a dual role. I did the 17s at the academy, so I was training and coaching in the daytime and in the night, and also scouting. um, And I I look back at that and think, wow, it was was extreme, the amount of hours, but I loved doing it. And it was, um, I learned an awful lot. I did a lot of miles. I watched a lot of games. And we found some really, really good players back in the day. From I, I was I did that role from 2000 to 2009, and 
while I was Chief Scout, I always had a team as well. So I did the 19s for a little while. Then I did the reserves. And uh, eventually I left the Chief Scout a bit behind and became the manager. How did you find that balance of being a Chief Scout and an academy coach? Because like, we had Gareth Evans, um, our under-18 coach, on this podcast a couple of months ago. And he was telling us all the intricacies on how to develop and help young players and... Um, kind of almost knowing how to develop certain ones and others due to their personality differences, having to kind of work on that and then go out and scout games and plan sessions must have been quite challenging. It was a lot. It was a lot. I mean, you consider that there was times I used to go out and put the kit out for the under-17 team on a Saturday morning at sort of 7, 8 o'clock in the morning, do the game and then go from the game to a game two hours away to watch for I used to I used to scout the opposition for the manager um, so yeah it was definitely challenging um, and actually when Steve Koppel came in uh, in 2003 I stopped doing the analysis of the opposition and Steve said to me all I want you to do Brian is to find players you go out and find players and that was got, that was like music to my ears because Doing an opposite opposition analysis is a lot of work. You know, it was an awful lot of work. So, and it, and I we just found players. We just um, we went out and in, into the market and found some really good players. And you know, you'll know names that we found. You know, the Kevin Dawes of this world, the Shane Longs of this world, the Nicky Shoys of this world. Um, players that did really really well for Reading and did really well in the game. Dave Kitts and people like that. Yeah, I, I want to come on to recruitment. Um, and how you find a player a little bit later on. and But as your career at Reading kind of progressed, you then moved into the manager's role. Talk to me around that and how you then managed to create and build a culture. Yeah, so Brendan, Brendan Rogers was the manager um, and Brendan lost his job and they asked me to be the caretaker. So I was caretaker in 2009, December for five, six games. And my record as caretaker was, in the league, was, um, what was it? I think it was two draws and three defeats, which ain't great. Yeah. Uh, it's not great. But we went to Anfield and we won at Anfield in the FA Cup. So I think the chairman must have seen something. And then we played Burnley in the FA Cup and we won again. So we eventually got to the quarterfinal of the FA Cup. So... Sir John Medeski, the chairman there, he was a great chairman actually for Reading. He gave me the job, and uh, and then we started to 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 win a few games in the league. When, you know, when I got the job, we were second bottom in the league, so we were looking not very good at the time. And we managed to get the team out of trouble. I had a great staff there, great bunch of players, and um, we ended up eighth in the league. We nearly made the playoffs. And then, obviously, continuing on from that. You then progressed through and, and won promotion to the Premier League. Yeah, the following year we got to the playoff final uh, against Swansea in 2011, and I honestly thought we were going to win the game. Uh, we were three 0 down at half time. We got back to three two, hit the post, and I still to this day haven't watched that game back. Uh, I've watched I watched the bit when we get from three 0 to three two and hit the post, and I turn it off. But apparently we lose four two, and. Um, the following year, we started the league and we lost the first seven games. We lost five. So in this day and age, you know, look at it and you might be in a bit of trouble. But, you know, we had a process of doing things, uh, which is important. And that's what it's about. Trying to find the right process to get the right outcome at the end of the week on the Tuesday or the Saturday. And um, we started to win. We started to win. The processes were good. And um, we eventually... Uh, ended up winning the league. When you were then working in the Premier League, obviously against the likes of Sir Alex Ferguson or on the touchline next to him, was that an opportunity as a as a manager, as a person to kind of pick the brains of the, the top people that you're against? No, not so much picking the brains. You're, you're competing. You know, you'll be in the company of top, top managers like Sir Alex and people like that. And we all know what an amazing manager, he, you know, he is. Or he was for Man United and, and the, and the calibre of the managers were there. But the idea was to try and get the right result. Yeah. So 
you know, you were doing everything in your power to compete. And, and I always believed that we could compete at the level. Um, you know, I mean, the year before in the, in the in the championship, we were competing against top teams in the championship, and and that bunch of guys they did so well, and it was about bringing a a culture together and an environment together of just a great bunch of guys, a real community spirit at the club, and um, and they deserved everything they got. They uh, they'd run through brick walls and they did it for each other. Yeah, and then obviously, um, after. A- a spell at Leeds, you then went to Arsenal mm. um, as their chief international scout? Yeah, I was senior international scout, so there was lots of scouts um, all over the world, and I was looking at the players that the, shout, the scouts were shouting up in all sorts of different countries. I went to some Korea, I went to Russia, I went to regularly in Europe. I was away probably three to four times a week watching different games. What was that like? Good, yeah. I mean, Arsenal, I was, I was there as a youngster, so... You know, I loved Arsenal as a club. It's a, it's a, it's a real classy club, and um, they're getting their rewards now. You know, some of the players that that came through and are coming through. You know, your Salibers of this world. We scouted Salibers this world. You know, Salibers when he was seventeen, eighteen years of age, um, and the manager there has put together a, a really good, young, hungry team. When you're looking at, and I'll touch upon this a little bit more in, in detail, but when you're looking at a celebrate a 17, 18 year old. How hard is that then to predict that he'd go on and get into Arsenal's first team? What, what are you looking for? It's hard to say what you're looking for, but you know, he's six foot four, he can run, he can pass it, he can play, he can compete. So it's, it's not rocket science. <laughs> but it's, 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 you know, it's like everything else. You know, sometimes they get in the building, it doesn't work out, they don't settle. And that was, a, that was probably right with Saliba. Saliba went on loan twice. And now look at him now, and uh, what an incredible player he's become for us. But he's he's matured, and uh, he's a bit older now. Um, but it, for for me, recruitment is about what the manager wants. You know, you try to find what the manager wants. What in any specific position? What is he looking for? Striker? Does he run behind? Does he come to feet? Is he a false nine? A wingers? Do they play inside or do they go outside? You know, fullbacks. If you, you know, and I always like to pair people up, like a wide player with a fullback. You know, if you've got a really offensive wide player, do you need a more defensive minded fullback behind it? You know, a goalkeeper, can he play with his feet? What's his, you know, philosophy from playing from the back? That sort of thing. So there's, there's, a, there's a lot of nuances when you're scouting, and it, that's why it's really having an important, um, having a really a good relationship with the manager to know is key. And then obviously when you left Arsenal, the last kind of three, two, three years, you've been doing con- consultancy work. Um, I'm really interested in this because it's not only for clubs, is it? It's been for businesses too. Um, just tell us a little bit about that and like the presentations that you've been giving. Yeah, so I've done a lot of presentations in the corporate world. I've done premiership clubs. I've done smaller clubs. I've done lots of, and just a bit about my journey and, you know, warts and all. Um and it's called my pre- my presentation. I've written a few presentations, but um, it's called "Winning, Losing, Mental Health, and Finding Balance," and and actually knowing what it's like to lose a massive game at Wembley in front of a lot of people, worth a lot of money, and how that affects a manager, you know, and everything you have to go through, and how you got this, you know, you have to find a resilience um, to get going again after that, and then to win and to win the championship and then to become a manager in the Premier League, that's got its difficulties as well because everyone knows who you are. You know, you're going into pubs and everyone knows you or going into restaurants and people know who you are. It's Premier League. So you have to deal with that as well. So, you know, I talked about all of these things and um, um, it, it's just a story. You know, it's not me saying this is what you do, this isn't what you do. This is how it was for me. Um, you know, and this time... 10 years ago, I, I just literally signed for Leeds in 2013. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, and I can't believe it's been 10 years since I was, uh, since I was at Leeds. Yeah. And you've, you've overcome a lot in those last 10 years as well. Um, you touched upon mental health. You've been a leading voice in terms of discussion to people's mental health. Um, just tell us why, why you've been doing that. Um, so, uh, I spoke to Paul Stewart. Do you remember uh, Paul Stewart? 
um, just to talk about certain things and, and Paul suggested that I talk to him about my stuff and I wanted to come out and, and, and bring it to the attention just to say, but for, because for me, I never opened up and talked about my stuff really, you know, and, and that's, that's so important, I think, for players, for staff members, for whoever, you know, on any given day, if you're not feeling great, come out and talk to someone and just say it out loud. You know, so so for me, I just did a, a mentoring course with the League Managers Association, which was great. So I've been mentoring managers and coaches and players recently over the last year, which has been really rewarding. And uh, I hope that, you know, I can bring some of that to, to the club just to just to be there, you know. And, uh, you know, if 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 someone wants to talk, then then, yeah, hopefully I can be there just to, to listen and ask questions and. You know, because that's been great for me. You know, if I'm struggling on on any given day, then I'll always talk about it. But you know, I've got, I have a lot of good days now, a lot of good days, and I'm in a really, really good place. And you know, coming up here, and it's um, I'm really grateful for the opportunity, and I'm really, really looking forward to getting going. In my role covering Hibernian FC home and away, I'm constantly online using my phone, laptop, or tablet, and I know the importance of staying safe online. That's why I use NordVPN. By using NordVPN, this protects me from hackers and gives me peace of mind whilst online. NordVPN also enables me to switch my virtual location. Thanks to our great partnership with NordVPN, you can get an exclusive discount plus four additional months for free by going to nordvpn.com forward slash highbees. There's a 30 day money back guarantee if NordVPN isn't for you. Stay safe online. One thing that I think is really interesting is the role of a, a director of football because you could look over a plethora of different teams and the role of a director of football is different. Um, talk to us about the role of director of football here at, at Hibs and how you see it. I can only talk about my lived experience. So um, I've been an academy coach I've been a 19s coach. I've been a reserve coach. I've been a head of scouting. Virtually a player liaison officer when I was at Reading because you know, we were, I was picking up players from airports and stuff like that. Uh, I've been a manager. Now, I don't say all of that stuff to say, oh, God, look at me. It's not that. Um, so I've been in the shoes of players as well. I've been a player. Um, so I, can, I, I understand what it's like to lose a game of football in the last minute. I understand what it's like to win a game of football in the last minute. I understand what it's like to cross a ball out of play in front of 50,000 people. And I understand what it's like to, to smash one in the top corner in front of 50,000 people. So all of those things, you know, to try and bring those to the table. And, and you know, I remember the academy, for example, you know, looking at, you know, I'm really looking forward to watching the academy play. You know, got the women's side and that was big for me back in the day, you know, when, when we we... We had that Monday night football with girls football. It was great. So, and it's everyone together. For me, it's all about bringing, it's about being together. I mean, I get a really nice vibe. I came up here a couple of months ago, I think, to watch the, the Kilmarnock game, which the team won. And it was a really good vibe in the ground. It, and it's good. it just feels like a really nice community. Uh, a great city as well. Yeah, and I, I, I imagine that in this role, getting the right processes in place is really one of the fundamentals for you then to be able to affect things. Listen, process is, is, is key. You know, process, you know, look, we know what our purpose is. Our purpose is to win. We all want to win. But how do you win? How do you find a way to win? And that's what it's about, really. And recruitment is really, really important. We know that. We will do the best we can, all of us, um, to find the best players for the gaffer, for the manager, so we can go forward in that process. And so the summer, is you do what you've got to do. You want to bring players in that can help the squad that's there already. Uh, so that's one of the, that's one of the big processes of being a director of football is to is to try to bring the right players in um, and fit them into what a squad looks like and what a team looks like. So that's that's one thing. And then there's you know you're looking at the academy boys coming through. Um, there's there's so many different nuances as far as. Um, you know how the clubs run, and and you know, I, I I need to just come in and and 
just have, just watch, just look and see what happens here and how it works. And I just want to just to see it all for myself. And obviously, this is my first day, so um, you know, I haven't got. No, it's not about me coming in. Oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. It's not. It's just I just need to. I just need to look and see. Yeah, and then I imagine once you've looked and seen, it's about trying to enhance almost the culture and then run a philosophy through the football club. Is that is that fair? Well, it's not, no, I mean, there's a, there's a great philosophy at this football club. You can, you know, this this club's been around a long time. It's got a great tradition. Um, so, yeah, it's not about me creating a philosophy. I'm sure there's a really there's a there's a good philosophy. The staff are all working together. Players want to do well. The fans want the fans want the players and the staff to do well so I've always been one of these people that feels that the 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 the, the fans are so important um you know without paying lip service it's so important that everyone gets together uh, and creates that environment and the right culture absolutely now we'll come on to recruitment then because um when we first came out to say we were looking for a director of football that was one of the key focal points um about or what we were required from the person that that comes in. So we mentioned you as kind of chief scout uh, at Reading, brought in by uh, Alan Pardew. Um, at that point, obviously, you were looking for or trying to find players to bring into 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 Reading under Steve Koppel. How at that point did you find a player? Obviously, from being a player and, and coaching, did you just have a, a natural feeling on? this player will fit this style what what do you kind of look at i knew what steve wanted that was the key so steve was pace power and he wanted pace power players who could run um so you know every single player that you scout has got different qualities i always think when you scout a player you know you look at him and you go well what's his standout quality is it can he run is he physical can he cross it is he technically very good can he score you know, if the defenders can, they win headers, can they compete? Is he a leader? Is he is he a possible leader? You know, because leaders emerge. And that's what I found over a period of time. Leaders do emerge. You don't have to be a... There's two types of leaders. John Terry's a leader at Chelsea back in the day. Martin Odegaard's a leader at Arsenal. But you couldn't get two different... They're, they're two different characters. But they're both leaders. So, um, yeah, I knew what Steve was looking for. And, uh, you know, when, when we signed Kevin, Kevin Doyle, um, he was 21 years of age, for example. He could run, he could run into channels, he was strong, he could hold it up. And uh, we signed Shane Long because he was athletic and he just needed time. But there's loads of different stories about players that we signed and uh, um, they've done well. And even at Arsenal, it's the same thing. You know, you're looking at players that can come in that work for the system that the manager wants. How, how do you find the balance then between character? and ability we well, look at character first i look at person first when when i would recruit i would say i need to know what the person is and if the character or the person isn't what the football club is looking for I don't go there even if the ability is at a high level if the character is not right i wouldn't touch it i wouldn't touch that situation because um it's so important to get the right characters in the dressing room and, and with with the right characters who are all going in the same direction, it's amazing what you can do. How do you then, how do you see what a person's character? Well, you meet the person, you speak to people about the person, and you get, to get, you get a feel about someone, you know, when yeah. you first meet them. You, you know, but it, I'm fortunate enough I've got decent contacts in the game. I can speak to a lot of people. I'm lucky that people pick the phone up, and I'm very grateful for that. And, uh, you know, you can ask questions, and you will do. Um, but yeah, finding out. But but person first recruitment is is very very important. And I was listening to another podcast that that you've done, and um, there was a story that really piqued my interest, and it was about uh, Alan Pardew after he left Reading to go to uh, West Ham, and a conversation you had with him playing golf. Oh yeah, I remember that. He said to me, and I never forget, I was in the bunker at the time. He said to me, uh, "Yeah, I was going to bring you to West Ham." He said, "But." Uh, you don't know enough European players. And straight away I thought, I'll show you. And I started to know it. And I wanted to know every player in the world. Literally, I was like obsessed. Once he'd said that, he didn't know. Um, 
I didn't have a very good shot from the bunker either after that. And and after that, I thought, I have got to know everyone. And when I was in uh, when I was at Arsenal, I think I knew most of people. Football's not that big, actually, when you know. You know, and it's like someone was coming to Scotland and saying, well, actually, does he know the Scottish game? I used to come to Scotland all the time. He's come regular. We had Scottish... We had a, a guy who had worked in Scotland and I'd come for two or three games. Um, I did a little bit of work for Celtic, I think a year or so ago, uh, on video for them, because uh, I knew the, the head of recruitment there. So, yeah, I think what's really important for me is I know what the boss is looking for, what he wants at Hibs. That is the key for me. What are we looking for? What places do we want? How do we want to play, et cetera, et cetera. So to me, to me that's really, really important. How how do you then, how do you learn that? So obviously day one in the job today, um, I'm sure you'll have spoken to Lee already in terms of what he's looking for and, and building that relationship and you know some of his coaching staff as well. How long does that take for you to understand what we have in the building and what he wants from certain positions and whether those people fit or not? I don't think that takes long. I mean, I, to actually, to know, I, I know the team, I've seen the team and I, I, I've studied the team. Um, and, I, and, I, and I know the, the boss's philosophy and what he wants to do and how he wants to play. So we've had that conversation. And then you try and pick out people, players, um, that can work within that group. And it's not just about the 11, it's about... It's about everyone, the twenty odd people, the twenty odd players, because everyone's needed. You know, you're never going to play every week, generally. Um, but if you're in the stands, you support the people in the bench, and you support the people in the team. And if you come off the pitch, you support the person who's you know is going to come on and take your place, because that's what it's about. That kind of camaraderie is so so important, and that's how you that's how you get success. Yeah, absolutely. And then obviously with Lee specifically and, and Hibs in mind I know you've spoken in the past about when you build cultures or you come to a new place a real key thing for you is working with good people and having good people in the football club what do you mean by by good people well it's 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 kind of like a um, people who want to work hard and have but also you know enjoy what they're doing. For me, this isn't work. This is, I've come to work now and I'm really excited about coming. And uh, I'm obsessed about football people and football players and trying to find whatever's best for, for the club. Uh, players are, are, that are gonna make a difference. Um, and that, that it, you know, and, and, and really enjoying it and enjoying that, you know, and, and listen, I've come up to Edinburgh on my own. My wife's at home with my kids and my granddaughter, and uh, she was so supportive. I mean, I'm very lucky that I've got an amazingly supportive family. And, um, you know, so I, I, I'm just excited about the whole thing. And I've come to the, this is the first day I've been here, and everyone is really friendly. Um, and it just looks like a, a, a good environment and a good culture. And I'm looking forward to seeing the, the younger teams play. Um, you know, and, and uh, yeah, look, I, I, I'm really looking forward to getting, I, I just can't wait to get going. Yeah, and like I say, I spoke to Lee and, and Ben and, and the board. Mm. What was, how key were they in in your decision um, that this was the right fit for you? Yeah, it had to be right for me as well. I mean, I know that, it's, I know that the process was, was, it was a long process and um, I, I, I had to be right as far as I was concerned, and I f it felt right. It felt like a good fit for me. I like the community-based football club that it is. Um, I like the camaraderie that's here. Um, so, yeah, and, you know, trying to build something, trying to build something that um, that everyone can be proud of, and uh, that's really, really important. Yeah, and when you went through that process, I'm sure you did a ton of research on the club as well. Um, I know you probably won't reveal them all, but... Give us some of your kind of early thoughts on the on the club. Yeah, in what way? In terms of um, the the kind of first team um, on ways that we could potentially move forward, or is this too soon? I, yeah, I think so. I think for me, my early thoughts were 
the fan base, really good fan base, really strong fan base. Um, once again, I know a community fan base, fans that want to get behind the the, the team, the group. Um, I've seen the team play. I know that the, the, the manager's got a lot of experience. The coaching staff have got a lot of experience. Um, so look, you know, my, my early thoughts, they are what they are. It's, um, it's early days. It's, uh, it's early days for me. I, and I kind of live in the moment as best I can. Um, I've done a lot of research myself on players in the last uh, 72 hours. A lot sat in front and, and looked the, uh, uh, looked at players that, that could be of interest to, to the club. Um, looked at our own players. Um, you know, and part of the the deal as well is is uh, is trying to improve the players that we've got at the club as well. You know, but that's not that that you know that that's everybody. I'm sure you know everybody wants to do that. Everyone wants to to you know all you've got to be is trying to be as good as you possibly can on any given day. Yeah, and you said um, obviously that busy kind of seventy two hour period. The summer window is not too far away. Um, recruitment has been. Uh, a big conversation point at the football club too so I, I guess that's something like you say that you just crack straight on with yeah no it's it and uh, listen the window isn't open so at the moment we're just doing our homework and doing what we've got to do and um, the most important thing now is is the game on Saturday absolutely well Brian thank you very much for joining us and everyone at home thank you for joining us for the Inside Training podcast really really insightful um, this one from, from Brian. Uh, let us know who you would like to hear from next in the comments below and thank you for watching. <laughs>